Whenever we make our easy classes tier lists, there seems to be a lot of anger and confusion. The anger can be a bit expected. No one likes being told their class is easy. And let's be honest, no matter what spec you play, some little LFG rat is bound to tell you that you play the no brain easy mode guaranteed glad spec and that you are a bad person for doing so. Let's make one thing clear, that is not why we are here. No one should feel bad for the spec they play, <coughs> unless you play BM Hunter. Anyway, a class being easy or hard starts by understanding there is a difference between skill floors and skill ceilings. Skill floors represent the difficulty of learning the core foundation of the spec or class. This is the minimum amount of work you need to do well and is based on a few things. For melee DPS, it can mean the complexity of your rotation. Can you do the majority of your damage with just one or two buttons? Do you have debuffs that get automatically applied and refreshed when doing so? How many CC abilities do you have and does it matter how precisely you use them? These are just some of the things that determine where that skill floor starts. On the other hand, the skill ceiling represents how much a class can be pushed to its absolute limit. If a spec has a really high skill ceiling, it means it can be min-maxed endlessly due to subtle nuances in its toolkit. This is where people get confused though. Just because something is easy to pick up doesn't mean it's not difficult to master. Take Resto Druid as an example. If you wanted to, you can pick up the spec right now, Q2v2, and get by with just a basic understanding of your healing priority. As long as you keep Life Bloom up and refresh Scenarian Ward with Swift Mend, you're already doing 50% of the work required to win most of your games with just three buttons. Easy, right? On the flip side, you could have your healing rotation on full autopilot while stunning multiple targets and dishing out the most badass, well-timed montage style Cyclones World of Warcraft arena has ever seen. In arena, this is a bit more difficult to do well since this playstyle can be easily punished and generally requires a bit more game knowledge. So when we were saying something is easy, we're referring more to the skill floor required to do well in arena. And remember, some things might be easy to pick up, but difficult to master. But speaking of easy classes, we make even the most difficult specs and classes easy to master at the best place to learn PvP, skill capped. If you want instant access to the best and most reliable info and strategies out there, talk to you in a way that will quickly have you climbing the ranks stupidly fast, then sign up and make our website skill capped your homepage. We recommend enrolling onto our academy courses, which are available right now, teaching you the fundamentals to truly become insane at arena. Then when the new season starts, we'll roll out our class guides, where we've worked closely with the world's greatest players to create the very best guides for every class and spec, including Evoker, so you can dominate arena and solo shuffle in the new expansion. There's no better place to kick your expansion off in Dragonflight than Skillcat. Special discount link is in the description below. Anyway, let's kick things off with our suggestions for easy melee in Dragonflight. Two of these probably won't come as a surprise. First up, Demon Hunter. Ever since its inception, DH has widely been considered one of the easiest classes in the entire game. A lot of this is tied to the core foundation of the class as a highly mobile melee DPS. While other melee might need to carefully manage mobility, Demon Hunters have high passive movement speed all game with a damaging ability that literally charges them towards their enemy. DH also conveniently is one of the most well-rounded offensive cooldowns that provides them with incredible self-healing while lasting half a minute. This comes with the return of their Necrolord Covenant ability, granting them periodic self-heals throughout the game just for doing their rotation. And if that wasn't enough, Demon Hunters continue to have a ton of passive damage mitigation against spell damage, which helps remove some of the burden defensively when playing a melee class. Next up we have Fury Warrior. Just like DH, this probably doesn't come as a surprise. Rotationally, Fury Warriors are incredibly simple. Only have a few damage buttons. Raging Blow is their main builder, with Rampage being their primary spender, which effectively turns the spec into a two-button rotation bot. With that said, Fury did lose some of their mobility with the removal of Crushing Blow, but can now play Stormbolt and Double Time, which were previously exclusive to their main talent choice of impending victory in Shadowlands. This should give the spec a more fluid feel to it without dramatically affecting its complexity. In any case, their streamlined rotation is what continues to make them an easy-to-learn melee in Dragonflight Season 1. Finally, we have Death Knight, and before you type in the comments, yes, Frost is probably easier than Unholy. With that said, both DK specs have a ton of passive defense that make them a bit more forgiving in Dragonflight. First off, all DKs now have baseline damage reduction while low on HP thanks to Will of the Necropolis. When you combine this with the anti-caster tech like Rune of Spellwarden, Death Knights as a whole are really forgiving on the defensive end. Of course, there is a bit of complexity to their resource system, but the convenient part about dealing damage is that it can literally be practiced while leveling or doing dungeons, which in turn makes it easier to focus on the more complicated things like utility. On the other end of the spectrum, we have our hardest melee DPS, the first of which is generally not recommended for beginners. 
Feral Druid continues to have a lot of complexity in Dragonflight, despite being relatively strong. For a while, Feral has been a spec with a lot of maintenance built into its rotation. Not only does it have a wide array of dots, combo point generators, and finishers, but it is one of the remaining specs that has snapshotting mechanics with Tiger's Fury and Blood Talons. Oh yeah, and just read the tooltip of Blood Talons. In order to activate it, the Feral must use three different combo point generators in a four second window, which is a massive departure from the two button fury rotation we discussed earlier. This doesn't even take into consideration the need to utilize predatory swiftness procs, which demands a lot of interaction with both party members in Arena, and that's on top of the need to properly utilize Cyclone, which itself is a rather complicated ability. There's honestly a lot we could talk about when it comes to Feral, but the spec as a whole it has a lot of depth, making it daunting for beginners. Finally, we have Rogue. This one might be a bit controversial, so let us explain. Yes, Outlaw might have been a relatively easy spec to play towards the end of Shadowlands, and yes, Assassination always tends to feel a bit linear, but Rogue as a whole is gated behind one giant obstacle, reliance on their partners. Even if you consider Assassination to be the easiest Rogue spec, it still has a bit of maintenance in its rotation in order to make the most out of Venomous Wounds. Not understanding how this mechanic works can dramatically reduce damage output. Overall, Rogue is the quintessential setup based class, especially for subtlety. Even though there have been moments where a single sub rogue could 100 to 0 someone on your team, damage values in Dragonflight aren't really supporting that option. This means that more than ever, rogues will have to strictly play around their teammates, knowing exactly how to support them on setups. Finally, we have our moderately difficult melee DPS, which is a category that is super stacked, so let's finish this section off with bullet mode summaries. Both Ret and Enhance fall here. While their rotation is relatively streamlined, they are hybrids after all, requiring them to make full use out of their utility to do well in team environments. In Dragonflight, Shamans as a whole will develop slightly more complexity now that Thunderstorm and Lightning Lasso are now baseline. Moving on, even though Windwalker is technically a hybrid DPS, it doesn't really perform a hybrid role. While its damage output can be incredibly high, its main difficulty curve is learning how to correctly adopt its hit and run playstyle. Inexperienced monks are easy to identify since they are the types who try and stay in the fight all game, not making full use out of the spec's ability to kite and reset the fight. Next up, Survival Hunter. While the spec is converting more to a true melee role, its rotation did get more difficult. The saving grace for all Hunter specs is how free it is to CC healers now that Intimidation is baseline. With fast arming, freezing traps, getting control going is relatively easy task these days. Finally, we have Arms Warriors. Although they share a lot of the utility as Fury, their rotation is tangibly more complicated, especially in Dragonflight where there could be the possibility of running a spec built around bleed damage, utilizing the Skull Splitter talent that causes all bleeds to deal their total damage instantly, something which could easily be min-maxed. With melee DPS out of the way, let's see how the ranged classes compare. Our first easy representative is Hunter. In the past, we tended to split up Marks and BM, but now enough of their utility is shared that the differences between both specs mostly come down to rotation. One of the things people tend to point to when it comes to Hunter is their role as a setup based class, but with Intimidation and Scatter both being baseline, the ability to set up CC has never been easier for the class as a whole, especially with Freezing Trap arming instantly. In general though, what tends to make Hunters feel easier compared to other ranged DPS is the simple fact that a lot of their damage can be done on the run. Of course, Aimed Shot has a cast time, but unlike other critical damaging abilities, it cannot be interrupted, which is one less major game mechanic to deal with. The only other ranged DPS that could be considered easy is Demo Warlock. Naturally, being a pet based spec has a unique advantage by transferring some of the burden of dealing damage onto an NPC, or in the case of Demonology, several NPCs. Naturally, there are going to be people in the comments right now saying how demo damage can be heavily min-maxed, which is a fair criticism, but a lot of their damage is intrinsically tied to one ability, dogs. Not only is Call Dreadstalkers instant, but they also feed Demo Warlock's instant cast damage with Demon Bolt. What this means is with a single button press, Demo is able to generate sustained NPC damage instantly while having burst later on. And like many of the specs we will mention, Demo has the luxury of having a major damaging ability on dual spell schools, allowing them to soak interrupts with fear, which is on the shadow school, in order to cast Hand of Gul'dan, which is both shadow and fire. Taken together, despite having lots of room for min-maxing, Demo is a convenient way of learning how to play ranged DPS. Just like before, now it's time to introduce difficult ranged DPS, starting with the newest addition to ranged DPS, Devastation Evoker. Before going into their mechanics, there is obviously a massive difficulty curve for learning an entirely new class, especially when their resource system is a mix of mana and something that loosely resembles DK runes. That and the fact that Evoker is loaded with skill shot abilities. To give just one example, instead of pressing its root like a mage's Frost Nova, 
Nova, Evoker has to actually aim their landslide. The other thing that makes Evoker feel a bit janky is its limited range, with many of its damage abilities having a baseline 25 yards. In arena games where you need to quickly line of sight to avoid enemy damage, the requirement to always be pushed in can be really difficult for caster DPS, which gives Evoker a distinct difficulty in PvP. Finally, rounding out our hard range DPS, we have Shadow Priest. Now, you might be wondering, out of all the hybrid DPS, that Shadow could be considered the most difficult. While it is true that mechanics like Damnation and Misery have made it a bit easier for Shadow Priest to get out damage, the spec as a whole still requires a lot of hard casting. But Dragonflight has also reintroduced Mind Spike, which is on the Shadow Frost school, and gives SP another way to manage interrupts. So why do we think it is still hard? Well, as a hybrid, damage is only half of its toolkit, and the remaining utility options are a bit more complex for Shadow compared to other casters. One key example of this is Mass Dispel. This spell alone has a massive learning curve, since there is often a very small window to use it effectively against better teams. Leap of Faith is another relatively difficult spell to use properly in Arena, since using it well requires tracking multiple different pieces of information. In any case, out of all the hybrid DPS in WoW, Shadow Priest often feels like it is required to play the support role more than anyone else, which is why it can be difficult to pick up for newer players in Arena. And to wrap up ranged DPS, let's quickly cover everything in the middle of both extremes and move on to moderate difficulty. First, we have both Affliction and Destro Warlock. While there have been some quality of life improvements to both of these specs, like Soul Swap and Soul Burn making their return to the game, the Warlock class as a whole still requires a lot of hard casting. One possible way to navigate this problem is the new Precognition talent, which rewards players for juking interrupts. This new PvP talent will scale off the skill of the player, so it might be less beneficial to inexperienced casters. Next, we have Balanced Druid and Elemental Shaman. We've grouped these two specs together because they fill similar hybrid roles. Being a hybrid caster means having to deal with multiple forms of disruption and micro CCs while getting trained while also being able to support with appropriate utility. Ellie Shamans in Dragonflight will have an expanded toolkit and will now have to manage multiple shields on themselves and their partners. With that said, both Ellie and Boomkin are more damage focused than anything else, and luckily a lot of their damage kit revolves around instant casts, avoiding the burden of being a true wizard. Finally, we have the entire mage class rounding out the moderate difficulty tier. In Shadowlands, there was a clear division between Fire and the other two specs in terms of playstyle. This was due mostly to the strength of Dragon's Breath, which now has a 45 second cooldown, more than double what it used to be, and is now available to every mage spec. The consequence of this could be shifting mage back in the direction of a true wizard, where instead of needing precise 3-2-1 CC setups, the class as a whole tries to simply blast damage all game, which in many ways reduces its complexity. Of course, there still will be a lot of skill expression for mage as a whole, but if the class becomes a true wizard, then their playstyle might be a bit more approachable for newer players. With all of our DPS covered, let's wrap things up with healers, starting with the easiest. Kicking things off, we have Holy Paladin. In the past, one of the things that made a healer difficult was how much it needed to hard cast. But these days, nearly every healer has an abundance of instant cast options that circumvent the need to cast, and Holy Paladin is a prime example. Rotationally, Holy Paladin hasn't changed much from Shadowlands, relying heavily on staggering instant cast builders like Holy Shock with their instant cast spender, Word of Glory. Of course, there is often hard casting sprinkled in, but the majority of its rotation is still instant. Not only that, but Holy Paladin's received some new tech in Dragonflight, picking up Aura of Reckoning. This, along with Awakening, means that Holy now has two ways to proc their biggest healing cooldown, which means minimizing errors with one of their key abilities. And if that wasn't enough, Lay on Hands is now usable in Arena, giving Holy Paladins one more defensive CD as an insurance policy for falling behind. Next up, both Disc and Holy fit the second and third slot for easiest healer. We anticipate that Disc will be more meta relevant, so let's discuss it first. Without a doubt, there is one spell that has really helped redefine Disc in recent years, Radiance. This spell alone offers an instant recovery tool once things go south, playing an almost identical role as Holy Priest Serenity. As a beginner, you don't have to carefully min-max atonement healing nearly as much with a spell designed to quickly top someone's HP. In Dragonflight, both Healing Priest specs have now picked up Void Shift, which for Discipline gives them one more massively strong cooldown to rotate. Of course, there is a skill curve for offensive play for both Priest specs, but as far as the healing side is concerned, Dragonflight is a good opportunity to pick up Priest as a healer. With the easy healers sorted, let's move on to what might be the hardest healers in Season 1. First up, we have Resto Shaman. There is one key point of separation between Shaman and other healers, and it's the fact that their cooldowns are just much weaker. Earthen Wall, Healing Tide, Ascendance, and Spirit Link might seem collectively strong, but individually, they don't really compare to something like Dome from a Disc Priest. This, combined with their relatively weak healing output, forces Resto Shamans to play more around their offensive toolkit and disruption rather than relying on healing alone. In Dragonflight, they will gain access to both Thunderstorm and Lightning Lash, 
lasso, which of course are helpful tools, but mean resto shamans will have more binds than ever before. So since resto shamans are so reliant on their offensive play more than anything else, and because their cooldowns are overall weaker, they earn the spot as a more difficult healer to pick up. Joining Resto will be Preservation Evokers. As we mentioned with their DPS spec, one of the inherent difficulties of learning this class will simply be limited range, with most of its healing toolkit having a maximum of 30 yards. This along with the fact that it has skill shot abilities means that the mechanics of healing as an evoker are unlike any other spec in WoW. Another particular challenge when playing evoker is how they use their cooldowns. Most healer defensives, like Spirit Link for example, are used reactively to counter lethal damage immediately. Some evoker cooldowns, like Rewind or Stasis, can't really be used in a snappy reactive way and require preemptive use in order to be completely effective. In general, the evoker is loaded with cooldowns that don't have one-to-one -one comparisons with other classes, making the swap to this class a bit challenging. Finally, it's time to look at our moderately difficult healers. If you've been keeping score, you know what's coming up. First, Resto Druid. On its surface, Druid has a relatively complex rotation. Not only do you have to keep HOTS rolling, but you also need to extend them in precise windows using Swift Mend. This might seem a bit daunting at first, but remember, all of this is instant cast. The real learning curve in Dragonflight will be adapting a more aggressive playstyle. If the meta is slower, then all healers, including Druids, have more opportunities to play aggressive. This means making the most out of your stuns and cyclones. For experienced players who are able to recognize shifting game states, this should be easy. But for newer players, this could be a massive challenge. Rounding things out, we have Mistweaver Monk. Before you grab your pitchforks, let us explain. First of all, did Mistweaver have it hard for most of Shadowlands? Yes. Why? Well, during the early seasons, they were notoriously easy to kill in stuns, which is why Eminence was introduced in patch 9.1, allowing them to port while stunned, and thanks to a recycled legendary in Dragonflight, all monks will be able to port two times in a row. On top of this, monks gained some new defensive tech for stun setups, and now have the ability to play Restoral instead of Renewal, allowing them to use one of their biggest defensive cooldowns while stunned. This means that Mistweavers have two distinct tools for dealing with one of the most frustrating mechanics as a healer. Of course, one problem that remains with monks is that they generally need to hardcast quite a bit, but if the meta winds up being slower, then this shouldn't be a big issue since lockouts would be less punishing. Before we recap, remember that when ranking the difficulty of each spec, we took a bias to its skill floor rather than skill ceiling. Something can be both easy to learn and difficult to master, which is definitely true of many of the specs we discussed. And to recap, here we have a complete picture of the difficulty levels of each role. Players new to Arena in Dragonflight would probably find it easiest to play something like DH, Fury Warrior, BM Hunter, or Demo Warlock for DPS, since these specs have relatively simple rotations and are almost entirely focused on doing raw damage rather than needing precise control. There are a lot of options for easy healers, but if you are new to the healing role, you might want to avoid Evokers or Resto Shamans since their toolkits don't compare well to any other healer. And if you want a one-stop shop to dominate next expansion, we we got you covered at skillcap.com. Our class courses will teach you everything you need to know to get instantly started in Dragonflight. If you have a rating goal you want to achieve this expansion, we got you covered with the data to prove it, which is why we were able to offer you a rating gain guarantee, giving you a full refund if you don't gain at least 400 rating while actively using our site. So what are you waiting for? Join over half a million lifetime users in the best learning experience WoW has to offer. Visit skillcap.com to get started the moment Dragonflight launches. In any case, we hope you found this video useful. Let us know in the comments below what Dragonflight content you'd like to see next. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turn all notifications on. We're going to be pumping out PvP content all expansion and you definitely don't want to fall behind. As always though, we'd like to thank you all for watching. See you soon.